If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I get hundreds and thousands of visitors to my sites across a portfolio of sites without doing active link building. And you know this because I've shown you my Google Analytics, I've shown you my statistics, and I even share some of my domains here on this channel. So I have to start this video by saying that the line, the line between what we can call natural or and unnatural links, and also if we talk active and inactive link building are blurry. It's not like you can totally categorize this in a black and a white box. So there's definitely stuff you can do to attract links. And in this video, I'll show you some of the total no-go's in my book, stuff you should never do about getting links to your site, and what I think you, you can do if you do want to spend some time attracting more links to your site. So the first thing you want to avoid on your site is to have every and all mentions of, of your site online linking to you. So what is a mention and what is a link? So whenever somebody just types a URL because they're referring to you, using you as a source or whatever, for some reason they want to mention your site, so they're just spelling your domain name or your URL or your brand name or whatever, but they're not linking to you. That's what we call a mention. And Google definitely picks up on this. So they know how many times somebody will link to you out of the total numbers of time people talk about you or mention you online. So you want this to look natural and this is one of the reasons why you don't want to do too much link building with your site because especially if you do this early on before you have any sort of traction online, if every time somebody talks about you or mention your blog or your brand or whatever, they also link to you, Google will know that you went out proactively and convinced and everybody to link to you. You either paid for it, it's what I call you paid or you begged for it or you spammed people to get those links. You don't want to do that. You want at least some portion of your links to be very, very natural. And that means that you also want to have some mentions in that whole profile of your site. So if you want to do link building, make sure that you don't go all in and don't do it too early on before you have any traffic. Because if you do that, you're not allowing for any natural mentions to your site, meaning that people will list the URL as I just talked about without actually making it a link that people can click to get to your site. So don't do that. And also you want to avoid getting too many links early on. It's sort of the same thing here. It's the same thing you want to do because you don't want to create a lot of links to your site before you have any traffic. Because if you have a ton of links pointing to your site, but no traffic, and you know, Google knows this from Google Analytics and so on, which we all have installed on our sites, even though they're pretty upfront that they don't combine those data sets, they're not using Google Analytics to assert where you should rank in Google. Of course, they have all this data. And I think we are naive if we don't think Google is using the data inside Google Analytics. So if Google sees that you're getting all these links to your site, but you have no traffic and no traction, nobody is talking online about what you're doing outside these links, it looks very unnatural because that would never happen in real life. I mean, before anybody would link to you, that you would start seeing mentions, you would start popping up somewhere here and there in forums or in other articles or some journalist picked up on an article that you wrote because they liked the content that you shared with the world. So make sure to never link build too much early on if you want to go down that route. But just before we dive deeper into this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and check the little bell so you'll know when I put out new videos because I have a lot of videos coming out with great SEO advice and I'll show you exactly how I do all these things for my own sites. But personally, for me, I don't spend my time building links. I still don't do that and there's still my recommendation to not do that. So why is that? This is for two reasons. First, it's very time consuming. You will spend a lot of time getting the right links to your site and educating yourself on what you can do and what you can't do when we're talking about link building. And at the end of the day, nobody knows. Nobody knows what plays into the Google algorithms, right? So you will never know when you did too much or too little or whatever, you really can't do too little of it. So it is very time consuming to keep up to speed with all these things that you need to check for. And also for sure to get those links. I mean, doing the outreach takes a lot of time. And I know this because I did outreach for a number of huge companies. 
I've worked directly with some of the major brands here in Scandinavia in order to help them attract attention in the media. So we worked with press releases, we crafted a clever content marketing strategy, we looked into data they had, anything they could share with the media and news sites and whatever in order for them to pick up on a story that would include their brand and eventually result in a link to their site. So I know exactly how much work this is and it's a lot of work and if you're new to this I would definitely not go down that route. Also for the second reason which is that it's very risky as we talked about already. You never know when you turn that nut just a little bit too much and you got a little too greedy in there and it might not be the case that you get all out of Google and they totally de-index your site or give you a penalty or whatever, but you might have a harder time ranking against those with real authority, which is what we're going for. We want to go for really good, awesome content that everybody online loves and that everybody wants to link to and mention online and Google can definitely pick up on those signals. So when we talk about whether you should spend your time writing more great content or hunting links to your site, I would always go for content because this is just your way to go where you don't have any risk and you know that you get buck for every penny or every minute that you invest in your site. That's what I'm doing and it's working well. I still do brand new sites. You know that I started three or four new sites within the last year. I think it was three sites within the last year and they all do perfectly fine. The same, the, they all follow sort of the same trajectory, the same growth patterns. I track all this in Excel and I share all my data inside the course that I have coming out pretty soon. And remember, we want to go for underserved topics in the beginning. This is something I talk about a lot here on my channel. You can see my video up here where I show you exactly how I find topics online just using Google features. So where I find topics that I can rank for with a brand new site without doing any link building because the, the matter of the fact is that you don't need to build links to get traffic. I've shown that many times with my data and my Google Analytics statistics here on my channel. So watch my other videos for that, but specific, specifically the video that I just linked to up here about how I do topic research because that is super, super important if you want to attract any attention in Google on a brand new site. So do that and go for traffic because as soon as you start seeing some real traffic on your site from those underserved topics that you are able to rank for, links will come naturally and then you don't need to spend your time doing it. Let me show you here some of the links that I've been able to attract to my sites without contacting these sites in any way. I don't think you even could get any of these sites to link to you, even if you called them a million times or you wrote the most clever emails ever, because it's not like these guys will just pick up on an email and say, oh, this is an interesting story, let's link to these guys. Let me show you some of these links here on my screen. So if we go in here on Arefs, we'll be able to see exactly what sites are linking to us. Most of those will be listed in here. You can see a lot of sites here, Business Insider, Wikihow, they're linking to us here from an article about how to set up a pop-up camper. That's pretty awesome because that's exactly what we're writing about. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can see that they have us here as a source. Go down to how pop-up campers work. And let's go back and check a few more sites like BuzzFeed and Bustle, Bustle or whatever, how you say that. So here, this they're linking with the text these kind of trailers. So if I click here, you'll see the linking to our article here about clever teardrop trailers. And they're probably listing some facts and stuff that we included in this article. So it's, I'm just showing you this, not to show off in any way, but just to show you how this can happen naturally, because we didn't contact, of course, any of these sites. But be aware here that you'll probably not see any traction with your site when it comes to attracting links if your site looks ugly. You want to make sure that your site looks awesome from the beginning. And this is something that I teach you here on the channel and also in my course because it's really, really important. People want to quote authority. And journalists and other bloggers, they look for awesome content first, but they also look for people who are credible. People who know what they're talking about. So you need to show the world that you know what you're talking about and that you are an awesome website that they have to quote because you have the best content. So first of course, write the best possible content because that's the first thing, but also make sure to look 
awesome from the get-go. Let me show you just a few things here that I do across my sites to make sure that anybody who's checking me out to see if I'm a credible source can see immediately that we know what we're talking about and I'm someone they can safely quote for the article. Let me just show you a little bit about how we do this on the side here. So I took good time to make sure that all the colors work perfectly together. And this little animation here is just a standard feature in Elementor. And of course I segmented the, the front page here because I had to, because we write on so many different topics, but there's also to look like a big magazine because that's exactly what we are. We have more than 600,000 page views per month now on this site here. And also if you go to the footer, You'll be able to read about our privacy policy and the contact page. And let's check out the about page. It's also a page that I spent a lot of time on because I wanted to look professional. I've just allowed myself to get inspired by major publications online to see how they do it, how they word it, what they are putting on the side like this. And so to maybe get the best I can, you know, you need to start somewhere. And I think this page here is really great right now. It has a personal story. There's actual people behind here. I link to some of the media mentions we have. Of course, this is a huge site now, so it's easier for me. But even early on, as soon as anybody would mention us, I put that on here so people can see exactly that we are the real deal. So all these things that you do on your site to look awesome is something we do to make sure that real people like your stuff when they see it and that they want to link to you because they can see that you know what you're talking about. But I'm absolutely sure that Google also picks up on these things. Maybe not directly in their algorithms. I don't think it's like they can see that this page design or this layout here is much better than this one. So it's, this site definitely has more authority and therefore we need to rank it higher. I don't think they can do that. But I'm sure they pick up on all the user signals that people are sending them when they are browsing your site. So let's say somebody lands up on your site and they go directly to the front page to see if you're sort of a real site or you're just some, something that somebody threw up there with a bunch of fake writers or whatever. And now after they saw the front page or the about page, they, they bounce right away because they don't trust you. Google can definitely pick up on this. And this is something that, that I'm absolutely sure plays into the whole authority algorithm things in Google. So make sure that everything checks out just fine and that you look huge from the get-go. You shouldn't wait till you have a lot of traffic to look like you have a lot of traffic because then you will miss out on the backlinks and Google will also pick up on those signals and they will probably not see you as much as an authority just as a journalist wouldn't if they checked out your site. So this is actually something that I tested for some huge companies that I worked with and also for smaller e-commerce sites back in the day when I worked with small clients. I don't have SEO clients anymore, so please don't contact me about that. I, I quit that game entirely a couple of years ago, but I did end up working with some major brands and I also know exactly how people react when they land up on a brand that they don't know anything about, like a brand new site. So I did a lot of eye tracking with software like Crazy Egg, if you want to check that out. I still think they have like a 30 day free subscription. It's pretty interesting. You can install this little piece of software on your site. It's very easy to do that lets you track the mouse of the user. You'll see exactly what they do and you'll be surprised to see how many people actually scroll all the way to the button to see the footer, to see if there's an actual address to see if there's an about page, to see if anybody, like if there's a real person or anybody behind the site, or if it's just sort of a scam or something they can't trust. And there are many things they do and I track these things and it's just really easy to see this behavior that people will bounce around and try to find the trust and the, the signals that Google is probably also picking up on. So of course they'll go to the footer, they'll go to the front page, they'll go to the about page, they'll just wander around on your site if they need to make sure that the content you have on your site is actually good advice. So this is even more important if you are borderlining into the YMYL space. So this is everything where people need an actual expert to let to, to teach them about anything. This can be financial stuff or health advice, but many other topics as well. It's something you can also look into. I have a video about it that you can check out up here. But I would say even for 
any blog you create today, we need to prepare ourselves for this to roll out on a more broader scale because we've seen Google throw more and more topics and niches and verticals into this YMYL bucket. So I'd say if you're building a website today, you absolutely need to think about these things. You need to show anybody out there that you are an authority and you know what you're talking about by having perfect web design on your site and showing who's behind the site. It can be a persona, it doesn't have to be you, it can be like a pseudonym, but you need to craft a clever and good and well-designed about page and have a beautiful home page and just the design in general. So people will trust you and see that you're an actual site. It's not just some scammy review site trying to trick people to click on an affiliate link. And also, if you want to make sure that you can rank your site and get a lot of traffic without links, it's even more important that you have an awesome click-through rate through the headlines to your articles. So what I'm talking about here is that you craft some really clever headlines for your articles. So whenever people meet your stuff in the search result page, they will, they will just have to click on your titles because they're so great. I'm absolutely sure that if you have a better click-through rate, you will slowly move up in Google because the more people that click on you, it's just one of those relevant signals that that Google can pick up on very, very easily to see that people want to click on your content. And when they end up there, of course, you need them to stay on your site. So you should never put something in the title that you can sort of fulfill or answer inside the blog post. Because if you're not answering the questions they have in the upper part of the article, they will just bounce off and that will be even worse for you. But you need to craft really good headlines in order to get more traffic because it'll result in better rankings. And I think this is especially important for a new site because we want to show Google that what we create here is just awesome. We want to attract a lot of clicks. We want to attract a lot of attention whenever they test you up there with a new article for your new site. You know, you'll be thrown in and out of page one in the beginning. Whenever Google tests you, we want to make sure that, that you get a lot of clicks and that people actually stay on your site when they click through to your site and start reading your content. So give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I'll see you guys next time.